Do you have a brilliant startup idea but are stuck in the launching phase? Are you feeling overwhelmed by funding, marketing, or just where to start? Don't let your startup idea stay grounded. Visit our website at eapla.com to schedule a Blue Couch meeting and launch your startup journey today. All right, welcome back to On the Cusp. Matt, I, I got my co-host Matt Snyder with me back again. We're in season seven, aren't we? We're in season something. We've been doing yeah, this a seven long time. Seven or eight, maybe. okay? We, we, and, and we appreciate, like we've been doing it for years. Yeah, uh, and we appreciate everybody following us and uh, staying with us on this. And I'll let you introduce today's yeah, guest. Yeah, I mean, this is exciting for me. Sometimes, like, with how busy people are and the entrepreneurs are busy, uh, you've been on our list for a long time. You, I, I think from the first time we started talking about this, you were penciled in on my list. Um, so today, my friend Joey Gouin, Joey Gouin Barbershop, Joey Gouin Hair, for years and years all over the city. I'm excited to have you. I think Thank you very you've much, always had man. a great um, instinct of business. I'll kind of lay this off that I, I remember when, when I was thinking about getting with you today, there was a time when I was pretty early in my journey, mm -hmm. probably a year or so, and you called a meeting above your salon in downtown of just people that were kind of edgier thinker, mm -hmm. entrepreneur leaders, that all of us were kind of at the you know, middle to start of our journeys. Right. And it was a great sense of, of group. That was cool. Uh, that was actually uh, my buddy Myron's great idea. We were, uh, really talking about the creative class of, of Shreveport. And uh, that was not the first time, but we have utilized that building and that, that space to call in um, either some uh, uh, authorities in Shreveport to kind of get a, a bank of knowledge of, of when I like move my business into downtown. But also once we were there, we really realized, uh, you know, all the creative people that were uh, surrounding that area, and we really brought them in in there to yeah. The to, thought to of like an on entrepreneur as a leader and having a voice, you guys have always felt that way, and you always encouraged me as as young and new in the game to also do that. And I think that's important, and that's what a lot of people you don't see that happen all the time. Well, I think people are scared of competition too. Like they don't want to speak out of turn, so to speak. You know, like and. And it's just important for all of us that are young risk takers to, to stand up and say what we need and, and what's working and what's not. Because uh, it's not generally our age bracket of people that are the decision makers, you know? Right. And so yeah. we're not always taken completely seriously at first until we prove our salt. And, you know, I, I ran into that and, and uh, but Joy, you started downtown, right? No, I did not start downtown. I started on Line Avenue. So you where started. I am now was really going home, you know? Okay. So when I expanded, I expanded into downtown because I was a, I was a runner in high school mm -hmm. uh, for a company called Classic Reprographic. So I was this young guy going in all these awesome buildings in downtown Shreveport. I fell in love with just downtown. It's just cool, historic, beautiful. We've got some amazing architecture down there. Uh, and then as soon as they opened Lee Hardware Building, I, I got an apartment in there and I was like 19 or 20 and, you know, then got into, got into hair, got into dressing, all that kind of stuff and uh, opened my first salon on Lyon Avenue in the 6,000 block of Lyon Avenue. And then after six years and that was really going and booming and it was amazing, I decided to take an enormous step and buy a historic building in downtown Shreveport, move my existing business, which was the calculation of the calculated risk that I had business already going to move into that business and move into that space. I wasn't um, taking the risk of this is just a dry, okay. cold open, right? That is a that is a spot too that you hear a lot of credit given to that end of Texas Street. Yeah. Uh, you know, Andrew Crawford, a great friend of mine with Rhino. Right. Which, what art space did there in that space, and Brady at the time, Paris yeah. Chicago. Joey beat them all yeah. down there. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, and, and Joey was the first one of those buildings that was really remodeled in a very modern yeah. way, we started, and it mattered. We started a movement, you for did. sure, and that was a enormous point of pride for me. When I saw I had no clue what I was doing, early 30s, 
I was terrified. I was doing something that I wanted to do and I wanted to see happen, but I had no idea the effect, the positive effect it would have on the city. And then see those bank of people going in there. And I got a lot of attention, still really naive, not understanding why, but they were like, you, you did this, you started this, and now there's a lot happening. Right. And that's a, it's a big deal. And I, had, I was clueless as to, uh, you know, the fact that I had kind of spearheaded something like that. But, I, I, you know, I, we were talked about pulling in groups of people when I did that because I was clueless. And I have to say this is where Shreveport was supportive. Um, before I signed on the dotted line of that building, of course, I had the keys to it. And I, I went and visited the building every single day, just going through, visualizing, um, sketching, imagining everything, you know, in its, in its fruition. But uh, I called in civic leaders, um, sheriffs, uh, uh, fire marshals, architects, uh, my banking people, um, my father, actually, because I just wanted, I wanted him to be a part of that process, too. And I brought them all into that building, and I said, look, I've got a business that's going well. I am terrified of what I'm about to do, but at the same, I'm equally as excited. Sell me downtown Shreveport and tell me how I can sell that to my clientele and get them down there. Yeah, because so your clientele at that time especially yeah. was. And so I've got, I've got, <laughs> not I mean, down there. yeah, no, they're not people <laughs> like, luckily the church, a lot of them are, are members of the, of a uh, first method. So they there. knew where it was. So they, they knew, knew where it was. There. And it was literally now used that as a landmark. I'm like, mm. we're just walking, spitting distance from the church. You know? yeah. So, uh, so that, that was helpful to me and being, and I always like to anchor my businesses close to something that Shreveport knows. So I would, I was able to say, you know, right across the street from Art Space, right down, you know, from uh, First Methodist. And now I'm saying right next door to John Pickens. You know, that's always been a part of my plan as, yeah. as, as, as risk taking. Um, I use the anchored business. But anyway, uh, I brought all those people in there and, and I was like, you know, I'm going to have to sell this to the Susie South Island, if you will, you know, right, to, to right. come downtown and, and show me. And I have to say they were they were taken aback at first that I had asked everybody to that come. That you but, would take that risk. Yeah. How but, many did you, out a percentage, how many people did you lose? How many said, Joey, I'm sorry, I'm not coming down there? Three. Three? That's it. That's it. Three. No way. That's, That's awesome. Uh, well, and it's because I did the legwork of, of asking these people, you know, how do I sell that to this? And honestly, you know, three, four people are loyal. And yeah. they loved yeah. seeing me expand and grow. And then the people that weren't clients loved seeing me, you know, doing something with this building. And uh, so th it was all positive. Well, I mean, Joey, was, how many people tried to talk you out of it? Oh, God, everybody that I talked to. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> even, even, your initial, even your initial group that That's you brought so, no, in? The initial group thought it was wise what I was doing to come in and ask a lot of questions. They were excited about something doing. But make no mistake, they just want people in those buildings, right. you know. So, um, you know, there's a couple of them that are pitchmen that just wanted, you know, roll out red carpet and, and get you down there. But I'm savvy enough to know, you know, the pitchmen are going to tell you the deep dark side, right? Um, so, I mean, honestly, the sheriff showed me, you know, like the on paper, the demographic of it, like, was one of the lowest in crime when downtown Shreveport, which was, I was blown away. The highest was Spring Lake. Yeah, <laughs> that was crazy to me. Yeah, but they were like, "There's such a presence, you know. We're right here by the church. There's a presence of of police downtown all the time. You know, there is some homeless population. But what people don't understand about that too, is that they're not actually looking at the particular person, and they they're they're nomadic. They move around, so you think that's a lot of them. It's actually not a ton. Yeah, they have a little community like right. in in downtown, and I I honestly got to know them. Um, but only because I wanted to, uh, I, I just wanted to be that guy right. that was like, had an open door policy. And, and I actually, after hours, cut a couple of homeless guys hair, did a couple of guys laundry for him, you know, <laughs> just to be a part of the, uh, That's awesome. I, I mean, I was just trying to do something good because <laughs> I mean, but our salon is so nice. I didn't want it to always have the preconceived notion of it being like stuffy or elitist, you know? So this is the way to bridge that gap a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was the first place I ever saw Vanica's art. Yeah, And yeah. like that- That was an awesome union. That to me just made that space and like said- Full creative space. Yeah, like, I mean, I, it like was really everything cool. Everything in there that was happening was creative. I, I lived above it for a little bit. Um, 
in its half construction, you know, a showered at the Y, I'd like <laughs> camped oh, wow. out upstairs. <laughs> I mean, it's, it was a long process of so six months of like, I just, I couldn't leave there. I just worked on it. Uh, you know, I was my blood, sweat and right. tears too. I, I worked till a certain point and then, you know, once it got past my scope of knowledge, that's when I hired people, but I, I had no capital behind me. So this was all me doing it. And I asked a lot of questions and I took a lot of pictures. I visited a lot of places. Uh, had storyboards. Did you going. learn the historical preservation piece on your own? Uh, did? I worked on it, but I hit a lot of walls there. I'll tell you that. Like that became such a taxing job to try to get all of the information on that building that I, I went ahead and just skipped any of the tax credits on it because it, at the time, A, you don't have time. Like you're trying to get this business open. You've borrowed this money. You need to start generating business. And then uh, it, it just wasn't relevant enough mm -hmm. to me to, to go through with it. I kept hitting a wall and resubmitting, and finally I just said, you know, never mind. Right. Yeah. You're not the first person to tell me that. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know. They can you can't paperwork wait. you to death, or you're like, the time I'm spending on this paperwork, I could just go do what yeah. I do yeah. and yeah. make more money. For the $20,000 <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm yeah. losing that much That's by right. not I'm opening just, yeah. right. That's right exactly now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly right. And they had, I've been there before. And they had so much things. say so over what you would do. But be that as it may, it was a wonderful, you know, Right. A, a experience. It, it was fantastic. I still own the building. Yeah. It's a barber college now, but I ultimately closed that business uh, for a, a multitude of reasons. But I ended up going home, you know, so to speak. I'm back in the 6,000 block of, of Line Avenue. Um, you know, uh, it is thriving. It's amazing. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a barber shop now instead of a salon. There was a salon right next door. So that fits all my needs. And I, I still do every single client that I had. But what I can say about downtown is that I did, I did succeed in getting those people down there. What I did not seem to succeed at, and which I was always wondering why, is I didn't capture a lot of downtown business. Some of the movers and shakers, like, uh, you know, the people that were really working on right. doing all that, I had some of them. But the people that work downtown, they get out of their car, they walk, they head down, they walk to their, you know, place of business, and they do the same thing in reverse at, at 5. Yeah, and you're not the first town. person to tell us that. Yeah, so there's at not... Five, at 530... Everybody's yeah, leaving. and I live downtown now still. So I mean, I walk my dog in the middle of the street out of the leash. It's a ghost town. I don't mind it, but you know, if we're going to do things in downtown, then then we need to get some anchors in there that are safe and fun and family oriented. And family and downtown have never been like, you know. Right. Uh, but I did succeed in getting a lot of people looking at downtown and seeing it in a different scope. I think and that was an enormous. Success. That's interesting to me as individual entrepreneurs, business owner, both of us. I feel the same way. Like I just did another event on that stage down there that doesn't get utilized on the riverfront. Right. And it's like, all we can do is shine a light and yeah. say, look, it can work. Here it is. We are yeah. not, we don't have the money. We don't yeah. have the power. We get fought right. by it a lot of times. Right. We don't we've have got that. great ideas and we've got connections. And we can show them, right. we can show it can work here. Yep. And if people don't pick up the ball and do that, but you have In to my have, opinion, that's have, all to we have risk do. takers to do it. And you, you know, high, yield, high risk yields high reward. And, and that's one pitfall of Shreveport is I feel like we, we don't have enough risk takers. And, you know, and the ones that do, you meet, like, look at all the press I got for doing that, you know, yeah. and, and how much that anchored my business. And so it absolutely helped my business moving forward. And several other people, people that work for me. I have several people that used to work for me that are business owners now. That's an enormous, you know, compliment. Um, All right, we're there, so I'm going to bring us there. You, you, we're, we're right at, okay. the, at the doorstep of this. You and I both, early days, we're doing things, we're getting cheered on, press, we're, everybody loves us, right? Yep. Yep. Both of us. We hit a limit to where they started worrying about yep. us. Yep. We got a little too successful. Yeah. We, we were well, getting I too say much this all press. the time. Nobody what wants you to that? be too successful or too proud of it. Is and that I'm a Shreveport problem? I don't, uh, you know. I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know because I'm a Shreveport boy, right? Yeah. So this is what I know. Um, I, I don't think it is. Uh, you think that would happen anywhere? I, I'm I just not sure. I think when you're, when you're young and successful, and you keep going and you keep moving forward and you take a lick and you stand back up, 
people start to wonder what the hell you're doing and what's going on and like what's behind you. I've just never had anything behind me. I did it all yeah. about it, but they yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. believe that. They right? don't believe that. And it's They're like, what's your motive? And I'm yeah. like, my motive is exactly what I'm telling yeah. you. And they're like, no, it's Make not. Make my business like, successful. You're right. That's yeah, your motive. Like, what do you mean like, it's, it's, my pa- <laughs> it's my passion. Right. I want to make it successful. Right. And, like, okay. no, it's and not. Just, like, just like you, I'm a busybody. I've yeah. got a hundred irons in the fire yeah. all the time. And that's that's my peace. I have peace and chaos. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, that's, that's if well, I'm that just That brings up an interesting there. point. I find that in most entrepreneurs, if you are comfortable working within chaos and the unknown, you will do better 100%. than a micromanager yeah. who 100%. must People know. People that are not entrepreneurs absolute. don't get that. That's They're like, right. you're all over the place. And you're like, right. yeah. yeah, that's what makes me Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, I don't know what I don't know that. until I don't know it. Yeah. And that's generally the way it goes. Yeah. Because the best things that happen are, are when you don't know. Like, I did the best stuff. If I would have known what I know now, I would have never done never half that Never done. <laughs> I mean, thank God we don't know. I know. You know, like, thank God that's we don't know. That's when you're like, like, I love well, that. And I, I love, love when that. a perspective shifts and that you see things. And you know what? I've checked a gazillion boxes. And yeah. Yeah, I, I don't regret a single one of them. I think all of it has, has driven my own personal success, has brought success to several people, you know, like dozens of people, has built more businesses in town because people that have left me see that it's doable, it's workable. They want that same thing that I have. Now, my problem is I make it look a little bit too easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they, you know, because that's just... That's I'm pretty yeah. slick about the well, way once that I do things. Well, once you've done it once, like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Once you've done it once and you've figured out one or two of the the hurdles, okay. It doesn't yeah. mean there won't be hurdles, right? Okay. Yeah. You just got to keep going. <laughs> My favorite thing about Joey is because of the business you're in, being a hairdresser. He's preaching the entrepreneurial Shreveport gospel every all day, day, all day. Yep. All day. I mean. How many people do you see? At least 10 a day? Oh, God, like, you're t- like 20 a day. Yeah, That's so you're so talking it up to 20 a day. <laughs> I mean, so I love it. That's just who's in my chair outside of that. I mean, the, the business oh, yeah, is full yeah. all the time. I never stop talking. But I am a good pitchman in that regard. But I just talk about what I've been doing, and it creates conversation everywhere. And, you know, and takes you back also to that creative class of people that are are doing the risk and, yeah. and, and creating I got to link you ideas. up with a couple of uh, entrepreneurs yeah who are trying, they're doing their first venture together and they're looking at a building downtown. And I just thought about that. I got to link you up with them. Yeah. All right. They're young men willing to take the risk. They just need a coach like you. Oh, I would love to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You can definitely do that. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think, Joey, you're our, you're a leader in Shreveport. I appreciate you very much because I find this is the same in a way that we say a lot of stuff people don't want to hear, right. but we're never lying. Ne- never like, lying. And I know that in you, I, yeah. and I think you know that in me. And some of the stuff we say at times, people don't like that we're <laughs> saying it, but it's the, but it's the truth, or the at truth. least the truth in our yep. world. The truth only hurts when it's true. That's right? Right. I mean, yeah. That is correct. Yeah, I'm like, that is I'm like we That's could that. lie like yeah. everybody else and make you feel good. But then you're just you're kicking just... the can down the road. Yeah, you know? like, or I can just tell you. Telling the truth is putting a period on the end of that sentence. That's like, right. this is where it's at. I mean, you know, like. Perfect. So I appreciate you. Joy, I'm so thanks glad for you're on. Oh, man, thank you. I appreciate thank you. it very much. Appreciate it. I'm so glad you're next to John Biggins. I'm glad I see you all the time. Yeah, man. Dude, I'm glad you're here. It's working. Well, thank thank, you, thank for, you. Thanks man. for coming. Thank you. Enjoy the podcast? We would love your feedback about today's show and who you think should be our next guest. Send us an email at info at Also, be sure to share the show and leave a comment on our social media post.